It's Thursday, July the 17th. Lake level is 917 in the quarter, uh, about a quarter of a foot over summer, normal summer pool. And they're still pulling quite a bit of water. I don't know if they're gonna slow the water down when they get it down around 917 or not. But uh, water temperature, oh, you know, low 80s, seems like it's 79, 80 in the morning, you'll find something that gets up into the mid 80s. But I've kind of been fishing all over the lake. Uh, the other day I put in a Kimberling and we actually had a really good topwater bite for a couple of hours and I was kind of surprised once the sun came up I thought it would be over with but uh, it actually went on for about another hour or so and those topwater fish you know I caught uh, in some deep creeks out in front of docks you know and it was probably 50 to 80 foot deep out in front of them docks and what was surprising a lot of times those are usually Kentuckys that are out there pretty much all largemouth that we caught and we caught them on a variety of baits, but the ones that seemed to work the best was like a pop R or a yellow magic or a spitting image or, you know, a popping bait seemed to be working the best and also a walking bait, like a, like a czar spoof, like the smaller one, the puppy or a strike king sexy dog. Smaller ones seemed to work a little bit better than the bigger one. And a lot of these fish, they were kind of surfacing from time to time, so they'd show themselves where you could throw at them. But a lot of times we were just casting in the blind, and they were running in little wolf packs. I mean, you'd see whenever you had one hook that had, you know, three or four other, you know, fish with it. And most of there was a lot of good quality fish, a lot of, you know, two and a half, three pound fish. The funny thing was, I couldn't seem to catch them any other way. When my clients were catching them on the topwater baits, uh, I kept trying to throw a little swim bait, like a, a 2.8 and a 3.2, thinking that I could catch them when they weren't coming up. I tried a little spy bait, uh, a little uh, four inch grub. Seemed like the only thing they wanted was something on top making quite a bit of commotion. Anyways, after that dive, we headed up towards Baxter and got into stained water up in uh, Little Indian, Big Indian area. And uh, we caught the heck out of them up there on Squirrelbills. And I hadn't been up there for a little bit, but I just went back up in there to see what was going on. And I went back up in there to flip a jig, but with the water level like it is, there's just not enough water in some of the bushes back there. So we're seeing a lot of shad back there. So I had this uh, Little John uh, Spro Squirrelbill 50 tied on. Caught a fish on my first cast, so I gave it to my client, and then he started to catch quite a few on it. And we caught him up there on a square bill for a couple hours. And we threw several different ones. Seemed like the smaller ones were working better because we were fishing so shallow. And what we were fishing was just kind of isolated snags out there on them real shallow flats where it was like uh, three to eight foot deep. But little 1.5s and smaller ones worked a little bit better than like a 2.5. The 2.5 for the area that we were fishing was getting down a little bit too deep and picking up a lot of leaves and trash. But uh, there was quite a little bit, uh, quite a little bit of bait back there that you could see. But you know there wasn't any schooling activity. A lot of times you just had to make blind casts. A lot of the fish were definitely holding on stumps or some kind of wood that was submerged that you couldn't see. So we were just, like I say, for the most part, we were, anything that we could see visually, we would fish real good. And in between the snags and a lot of the lay downs, we was just covering water and pretty much again, you know, pretty much all largemouth. And I've been fishing up in the jam. I have not been doing much drop shot. And I know a lot of the guys are catching them out there anywhere from 30 to 40 feet on drop shot over trees. You know, I've done it a little bit through the slow periods of the day, but it seems like if I stay in the stained water once that sun gets up, whether it's up in the upper White River or Long Creek or the Indian Creeks or the James, I can continue to get bit, you know, fairly shallow, shallow, I mean 20 foot or less. And it seems like, you know, later in the morning and stuff when the sun gets up, uh, I'm having to catch them on the bottom. My deep crankbait bite's not as good as it was a few weeks ago. 
And a lot of the fish, when I was catching them on a deep crankbait, I was catching a lot of walleye too. But I think a lot of the fish are starting to go a little bit deeper out there on them humps and ledges. But I've been catching them on uh, shaky heads, football jigs, uh, a variety of different baits. One of the ones that's kind of working the best still for me, and I'm getting a little harder to find them, but it's a, it's a zoom either a magnum trick worm or a magnum finesse worm. Uh, green pumpkin, watermelon red, and I'm throwing it on a five fish lures, uh, ultimate shaky jig. This is a, it's got a six odd hook in it. And I throw it on bait caster, probably 17 pound line. But a lot of the smaller ones, we've also got one with a, we haven't got a mountain production yet, it's a prototype we've been playing with, but it's got a, a five aught fine wire hook and, and I've got these in quarter, three eighths and halves, but I've been using a, this is a big bite, it's like a Cinco type worm. Uh, also been throwing uh, some craws on them. Uh, and you know, the good thing about these baits, you can throw just about whatever plastic bait that you want on them. Uh, football jigs have been working good. I've been kind of mixing it up with the, a pig sticker makes a, a good little football jig. Uh, another company that's got a, a football jig that I really like is uh, Ledge Rock Lures. And they're right here in Shell Knob. But instead of being a blunt football style football head, let me see if I got one to compare it with. But anyways, it's tapered right in here. Really comes through the rock and the cover real good. And he's got them in 9 16 and 11 16 And I've been using any kind of twin tail trailer. Sometimes I'll use a, a beaver bait. Twin tail chompers, this has got a, a striking baby rage craw. As water gets a little warmer, I'll go up to a, a bigger craw. Uh, and also a five fish lures, three quarter ounce. Uh, cover jig will work in the same place as a football jig. And the reason I like a lot of these other jigs and the shaky head better than a, better than a, than a straight football head, most of the time I'm, I'm fishing either rock piles or wood or stumps. And the football jig does just doesn't come through the cover real well. So I like these other baits a little bit better. They come through the brush and stuff a little bit better. The ledge rock, lures jig, the five fish, ultimate cover jig, and then the shaky head jig. It just they've all got like a pyramid type shape where they'll come through the cover a lot better. And as far as the worm, I mean, I don't think you can throw too big a worm. Uh, I've been throwing a 10 inch old monster on them as well catch a fish on them, you can Texas rig a worm as well, you know, with like a half ounce weight. But a lot of these fish have been on, you know, the main river points where a channel comes up against it. If, when they're actively feeding, they seem like they're up on top of the flats, but then when they're not actively feeding, you gotta set out in the channel and work it down the slope. And that's usually where you're gonna get into your bigger rock and some timber. But it seems like through the midday, uh, you know, a lot of times you're only going to get one or two fish a point. I really haven't found them grouped up a bunch. It seems like i got to keep moving around. But, you know, the boat traffic, uh, it's, it's been getting pretty busy out there after 10, 30, 11 o'clock. So what I'm trying to do that time of day is, is stay in the creeks, uh, out of the way of a lot of the boat traffic. And like I say, there's still a lot of fish up there pretty shallow, especially if there's a little bit of stained water. Still been a good topwater bite early. Uh, some days it's not in the same place as the previous day, but if you're fishing the clear water, I'd look for topwater fish on bluff ends, over deep trees, out in front of deep docks. And the main thing about the topwater fish seems like there's got to be some bait fish, some shad around. And them fish are pushing, you know, herding the shad early in the morning. So, uh, till next week, uh, good luck, good fishing.